again I say welcome to another GBB Ministries presentation. Today we want to focus on the book of Genesis. We want to focus on the book of Genesis. I pray that you will find the time to tune in with us, listen to us as we use the word of God to bring light to the world. We view a message entitled today, Naked and Hiding. Naked and hiding. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father which art in heaven, we come by here one more night. We come by here one more time to bring glory to your holy name. As we enter your world, we pray that you may guide us through, that you may send your Holy Spirit, that you may speak to us. Speak to us right here and right now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Naked and hiding. The atmosphere was charged with love, peace, and togetherness. When God created man, God created everything for his well-being, his happiness. But things did not always remain that way. The love that was once there suddenly disappeared over a period of time. God made man or created man. And God placed man in the Garden of Eden. In the book of Genesis, we pick up the record. Genesis chapter number 2, reading verse 16. The Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man. Now let's, let's, took, let's take up verse 15. Let's go from verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to keep it. Now, Genesis chapter 2 and reading verse 15, the Bible says that God, the one that created man, took man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. And when, when God placed him there, God gave him something to do. The Bible says he put him there that he may dress it and keep it. Verse number 16 says, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree that is in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. So man had that power, that, that power of choice, that freedom, so to speak, to eat from every tree that is in the garden. And I want to believe there were hundreds or maybe thousands of trees to choose from in the Garden of Eden that he can eat so that he can be satisfied. And so the Bible says in verse 17, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So in the Genesis chapter 2, in the Garden of Eden, God gave man a specific command. God was very specific in his instruction that you can partake of every tree in the Garden of Eden. On the east side, on the west side, on the south side, in central Egypt, you, in, in central Eden. But there is this one tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it because God said the day you do it you're going to die. Now you got to understand ladies and gentlemen God is a very specific God. God say what he means and he means what he says. God will not leave us in confusion. When God wants us to do something God will tell us in clear notes in clear language what he God wants us to do. When God wants us to refrain from doing something, God is quite clear. And so the instruction to Adam and Eve was quite clear that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was out of bound when it comes to their eating. But then something happened in Genesis chapter number 3. In the book of Genesis chapter number 3, the account says, and the, sup the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden. Now you're going to understand this, that the serpent was 
a creature created by God. And the devil was now using that beautiful creature as his medium to walk through to deceive Adam and Eve if possible. And so the Bible says, now the devil was talking to the woman through the serpent. Here's what the Bible says. And the Bible says in verse number 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it. So Eve knew the instructions of God. But yet still she had a discussion with the devil about God's instruction. You see, and that's the problem we face as human beings. We hear the word of God. We know what God asks us to do. We hear what God says to us. But we want to discuss God with other people or discuss, discuss God with the devil. You got to understand when God speaks is yea and amen. We don't discuss God with man. We discuss man with God to ensure that man is going the way God wants him to go. And so now Eve, having this little conversation with the devil. The devil said to Eve in verse number 5. For God doeth know. The serpent said unto her in verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman. You should not surely die. Now, now, my brothers and sisters, this is very deep. We are talking about a being that have been in the presence of God, rebelled against God, and was kicked out of heaven. Now he's giving instructions to the creatures of God. And he's saying to the woman Eve, God knows, you, you got to understand it, that you should not surely die. Understand, when God says that you're going to die, believe it, you are going to die. And so the woman, the conversation continued. In verse 5, he says, For God doeth know that in the day that you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. So here was a serpent. Or the devil walking through the serpent, saying to Eve, listen, what God said to you, it is not really true. You will not surely die. Ladies and gentlemen, if we listen carefully, we can hear the voice of the devil speaking to beautiful creatures today as he did through the serpent. There are those who go contrary to the will of God. And there are those who wants to do the will of God. And when they decide to do the will of God, there are those who will say to them, you don't have to do it. You don't have to keep this. You don't have to worship. You don't have to obey. You don't have to give praise. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, we got to make our minds up as to who we will obey. And the Bible says in verse number six, what how things have changed. And when the woman saw that the fruit was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and it was a tree desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and she did eat and gave also unto a husband with her and he did eat I want us to understand this she stopped Eve to discuss God's word or to discuss God and his instruction with the devil. You see, anytime you give the devil an inch in your life, he comes in and wants to take rain in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, it is never a good thing to stop to talk to the devil. It's a good thing to rebuke the devil, but we should not discuss God with the devil. And so now the Bible says, the woman was seeing things differently. In the book of Proverbs. What book did I just say? In the book of Proverbs. Uh, chapter number 16. And verse 25. Here's what the Bible says. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So you might be here. Uh, listening to me. 
And you might think that, listen, there is a better way. There is another way that I can live my life. There is another way that I can do things. There is another way that I can show obedience to God. But there is just one way in which we can live our life, which we should live our life. And that is the way of Christ. There is one way in which we should live our life. And that is in the righteousness of Jesus under the blood of Jesus Christ. But here in Proverbs the Bible is saying that sometimes we see things differently. But understand once we see it differently to what God said to us, it's going to lead, it's going to lead to death. And so the Bible says in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, as we cover the story, in verse number 6, verse number 7. Now in verse 6, she see that she saw that the tree was good for food, although God said it was not good for them, or they should not touch it. She see that now, the, the, because she talked to the devil, she saw that it was pleasant. The Bible says in verse number 7, and the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they saw fig leaves together and hid themselves. Now watch this. They, they saw fig leaves together and make aprons. Now ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand this, that Adam and Eve was not created blind. They could have seen. Now what to confirm this? In Genesis uh, chapter number 2, Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 25, the Bible says, And they were both naked, that's the man and his wife. They were both naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now watch this, what's the difference? When God created Adam and Eve in the perfect state, the Bible said that the woman or the man and his wife was naked and they were not ashamed. But now sin has entered. Shame steps in. But there is something else we need to understand. That Adam and Eve was clothed with the glory of God. And now that sin entered their life. The glory of God departed. Just as the glory departed over Israel. When the ark of God was taken. And when the priest, the high priest Eli. And his sons were doing things contrary to the will of God. The glory. So now Adam and Eve uh, committed sin against God. God's glory no longer covered them. What a sad day in the Garden of Eden. But I want to notice something. I want us to notice something. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse 7, that they sow fig leaves together and make themselves aprons. Now there is two things I want to say about this. Well, two points I want to make from this. One, number one is, aprons were never meant to cover the entire body. Now, now, you don't understand what I'm saying. You go to a restaurant, go to the kitchen, you go to a hotel, and go to the kitchen, and you will see what I'm talking about. Aprons were never meant to cover the entire body. And I'm saying to us today that most of what our women are wearing today and some of our men are aprons. What they're wearing is piece of garment and not an entire garment. So you gotta understand when your clothes are designed to suit you, it will always be apron. It will always fall short of what it's supposed to be. Why not let God be your designer today? And so the Bible says, they made themselves aprons to cover up their nakedness. The other point I want to make on this is, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to our nakedness as it relates to the spiritual life, when it comes to sin and its nakedness, there is nothing we can do to cover up ourselves. Man do not have the power to set himself free. Man do not have the power to cover himself from the, from the, from the brunt of sin. Man do not have the power to clothe himself or to save himself. Salvation comes only through Jesus Christ and is only under the blood of Jesus and his righteousness we can be truly covered. And so now the Bible says in verse number 8, and so the Bible says, and they, they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife, 
and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, these same couple, Adam and Eve, our first parent, once enjoyed the presence of God. Our first parents once enjoyed worship in the presence of God. Our first parents once looked forward to being in the presence of God. But things have changed and trends changed dramatically. Now they are naked and they are hiding from God. But I want us to understand in the book of, of Jeremiah. Let's, let's turn to Jeremiah chapter number 23 and pick up what the Bible has to say. In the book of Jeremiah chapter number 23, the Bible says in Jeremiah 23 and verse number 24. Can any heed in secret, uh, in a secret place that I shall not see him? Said the Lord, do not I feel heaven and earth? You got to understand that none of us can hide from God. There is no hiding place from God. Adam and Eve thought they could have hide from God. But it's sad to say that today many are running from the voice of God. And there are many who are trying to hide from God. There are those who hide or try to hide in the gram or in the crook of religion. There are those who try to hide behind the Bible. And there are those who try to hide behind some position in the church of God. But I'm saying to you today, you can hide from man, but you cannot hide from God. Because God knows the beginning from the end. The darkness and light is the same with God. God see what's going on in darkness and he knows what's going on and see what, what's going on in the light. So there is no hiding place from God. In the book, in the book of Psalms, the Psalm, Psalmist David says, listen, there is no place that I can hide from God. The Psalmist David says, I think it's in Psalms, uh, Psalms 1, yeah, Psalms 139 and verse 8. Listen, it says, even if I make my bed in hell, God is there. Wherever I go, I go up to the heaven. God is there. Wherever I go, God is there. And God sees. And God knows what is going on in our heart. Man may not be able to tell you what is going on on the inside. But God knows the intent of the heart. And so the Bible says, Adam and Eve, they made aprons to cover up their nakedness. Now verse 9, God said, God called unto Adam and said unto him, where God? This was not a question to find out his location. This was not a question that suggests God did not know where Adam was. God knew where Adam was. And God knew what Adam had done. This was a question to call his attention to his present condition. That he had transgressed the law of God. And now he had found himself in a lost relationship. He had found himself in a lost situation. And he had found himself in a condition where he really needs God, need God's help. God asked Adam, where are thou? And I believe God is asking the same question today. God is asking you, in light of my commandments, where are you? In light of my church, where are you? In light of Bible principles, where are you? In light of preparation to heaven, where are you? In light of the character of Jesus, where are you? In light of having the mind of Christ, where are you? And not too many people can answer this question because there are those who are lost and they don't know it. And there are those who think that they are saved and they don't even know that they are lost. Uh, uh, there are those who are saved, lost and they know that they are lost and they pretend to be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing can cover up for our mistakes. Nothing can cover up for our shortcoming. There are those who think that coming to church, every time the church door is open, coming out to worship, that is, every time the church door is open, that will cover up for their shortcoming. There are those who think, if I hold an office in the church, if I become the head superintendent, if I become the head chorister, if I become the leader of the church choir, if I become the pastor of the church, if I become the, the first elder of the church, nobody will know my shortcoming. But you got to understand at the end of it all, we don't, you do not have to answer to man. 
but you have to answer to God and you need to start putting your life together now so that when your name is called or when the role is called beyond that that you will be able to answer uh, to the call of God and so now God called out to Adam and asked him this question this heart such in question where art thou the Bible says in verse number 10 and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And the Bible says, God says unto him, Who told thee that thou were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree that whereof I command thee thou should not eat? And here is man's response. And the man said, The woman that thou gavest me, the woman, whom thou gave to be with me, she gave, she gave up the tree, and I did eat. What a sorry answer for the first man that God has created. God is now calling Adam to the fact that you have transgressed my law. It is time for you to own up now to your transgression. But he chose the blame game. He chose the easy way out. He decided to blame his wife. The same one where he exclaimed, This is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken for me. He was saying to God, If you did not give me that woman, I will not be where I am today. And how sad it is that many follow the example of Adam and blame others for the shortcoming. Even within the church of God, you find people blaming others. When they do not get it right, they blame others. When they cannot live a straight life, they blame others. Oh, the preacher, I preached too much of strong messages, so I couldn't come back there. Oh, the church is filled of hypocrites, so I can't go back there. I want somebody to tell me which part of the world that we can go that you will not find hypocrites. If you go out back into the world, there is still hypocrites out there. Anywhere you go, you will find hypocrites. So let's not try to blame people for our shortcoming. Then God, the Lord God, verse 13 says, and, and the man says the woman, and verse 13, here's what God says now, and God said unto the woman, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Now, now, now look at this. Nobody is willing to own up to the mistake. Nobody is willing to say, Lord, listen, I have transgressed. Lord, I have gone, gone contrary to your will. Lord, I have sinned. Please forgive me. Adam blamed Eve. And Eve blamed the serpent. But you got to understand that the devil cannot make us do things that we do not want to do. Understand this preacher very carefully. He can tempt and he can roar like a lion. He can do all that he can. But if we stand the ground of righteousness, the power of God will be available to us so that we can continue to do the will of God. Let us not make a mistake and start blaming people, but let us come back to God. And so the Bible says, And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all the cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy heel, you shall bruise his heel, but he shall crush, you shall, he shall, let, let's, let's take this over. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, but thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God was here setting the devil on notice. 
But God was also pronouncing the salvation plan for mankind. God was telling Adam and Eve as he spoke to the devil that listen, I'm going to send a deliverer. I'm going to send one who is going to get you out of the mess that you have gotten yourself into. And I'm saying that person is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is still the savior of the world. So I don't know what your condition is. I don't know what your life is. I don't know how messed up your life is. And I don't know how naked you are. I don't know where you are hiding. But Jesus can find you and set you free. Can somebody say amen? And on to the woman he said. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth ch children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband. I want to move down a little bit. Watch this now. Verse number 20, the Bible says, And Adam called his wife, named Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Verse 21, and Adam said also, and his wife, did God make coats of skin and clothed them? Now, there is, there is something about this that we need to understand. Remember that in Genesis chapter number 3, in verse 7, there about in verse 7, Adam and Eve took fig leaves and they made aprons to cover their nakedness. But God, God is now giving them a different garment. God is now covering them totally. The Bible says that God made for the man and his wife coats of skin. Listen, coats means a total covering. And only God can cover us totally. If you want to be covered, you got to be covered in the righteousness of God. You got to understand, man's garment will partially cover man, but God's garment to man will cover man totally. Can somebody say amen? And so the Bible proclaims, the Bible makes it clear. The Bible makes it clear that God made April. We cannot, a couple of things that we need to understand. One, we cannot hide from God. Two, that there is nothing that we can do to cover up for our transgression but get under the blood of Jesus Christ. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah made it clear. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, verse number 21. Verse number 21 says that God made a covering for Adam and Eve. Quite different to what Adam and his wife made. God made a different covering. In Psalms, what book did I just say? Psalms 91. I want us to go to Psalms 91, reading a verse, uh, reading from verse number one. Psalms is the book, reading from verse number one. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. I don't know if you hear what the Bible is saying. Man has found himself in a lost condition. David understood what it meant, what it meant to be lost. David knew and he had his, his condition of, of being lost. So now that he came back to God, David is here saying, listen, uh, in the sacred place, that he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Now a refuge is a place where you go for protection. A refuge is a place where you go for shelter. And I'm saying to you, we need to be sheltered from the sins of this world. I'm saying to you, from the immorality of this world, we need to be sheltered and we need to be covered. But there is only one way that, and one place that we can go and that is under the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible continues. Surely, he shall deliver thee. Surely, David says, he shall deliver thee. Read in verse number, number, number 17. Watch, what, watch uh, verse, verse 7, sorry. And, and the Bible says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Now let's roll down. Now watch this. Because thou, verse 9, Because thou has made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, 
then shall no evil befall thee, and no plague shall fall upon thee. Verse, let's go back up to verse 4. He says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I want to take this over. The truth of God is our shield and our buckler. The truth of God is our covering. Hence the reason why we need to come under the blood of Jesus and permit Christ to come into our life so we can do the truth of God. You want to be covered today? it got to be God's way. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, man has always tried to run away from God and make their own covering. Man has always tried to run away from God and make their own covering. In the book of Revelation, what book did I just say? Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation is the book. The chapter number is 3, reading from verse number 17. Listen to what the Bible says. Because thou says, I am rich. I think I should go back up. Uh, reading from verse 14. The Bible says unto the angels of the church of Laodicea write, this thing said the Amen, the faithful witness, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. Now, how does this play in into Adam and Eve's story? You got to understand that Adam and Eve tried to cover up and make themselves feel okay and make it look as though it's all well and good and in the same way there are people who try to cover up and make it seem as though it's okay when they know for a fact it's not okay they try to cover up using some sort of covering outside of the covering of God and so the Bible says God says listen I know your works remember we can't hide from God so it continues I know that works and thou need a cold nor hot Verse 6, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art what everybody? Wretched. Thou art miserable. Thou art poor. And thou art blind. And thou art naked. Here comes the word again. Adam and Eve hide. They hid themselves among the tree. Because they found out that they was naked. And the Bible is now rebuking the church of God. And God is saying. You pretend and think that everything is well. You think that all is okay. You think that you are rich. But you don't know that you are poor. You think that you are covered and you are clothed. You are red clothed. But you don't know that you are naked and you are blind. Understand, a life outside of Jesus is a miserable life. The Bible says, you don't know that you are one, you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. Now that's a terrible condition to be under. You are not just wretched, but you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. You see, you got to understand, covering comes from God. So here's what God comes to the church. God says, listen, I come to thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white remnants. Now the white remnant represents the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There's somebody here. The white remnant represents the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And God is saying to his church, you need to stop hiding. You need to come out from hiding and cover your nakedness. God is saying to you, young man, God is saying to you, young woman, God is saying to you, senior man and senior woman, you have been naked for too long. You have been covering up yourself for too long. It is time for you to be covered under the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Stop hiding behind religion. Stop hiding behind excuses and be covered with the blood of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? And so the Bible says, 
God said to the church, Hey, listen, I come to thee to buy of me gold, try and fire, that thou mayest be rich, white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, that and, and anoint thy eyes with eyes of, that thou mayest see. Now listen, there are a lot of people in our world, and yea, I say, it is painful sometimes for me to say it, but that's the way it is. Even in the church that, oh, that has eyes problem, they have one, a nakedness problem. They have two, a hiding problem. And three, they have an eyes problem. Nothing you can say to them from the words of God will they see. Because they have their mind set up. They have the idea in their mind what they want to be like or what they think this religious life should be like. But you got to understand that God alone, God alone puts in order the life that we should live. God puts in order the life that we should follow after. Man cannot put in order for us the life that we should live. That life is the life that should be wrapped up in Jesus. And so only God put in order the life for us to live. And it's time for us. It is time for us to come out from hiding. There are a lot of seven-day Adventists. Oh yes, I just said that. There are a lot of seven-day Adventists who are naked and hiding behind the sun. What, what do you mean by that, preacher? We come to church and worship God every given Sabbath, but as soon as the sun goes down, we get back into the old way of life. I'm saying this is just a cover up, but thank God, God is a God of a second chance. Thank God that God is a merciful God. And God is willing to give every man, every woman, every boy and every girl a second chance so that they can live for him. Here is what God says in the book of Ezekiel. What book did I just say? Ezekiel chapter number is 36. Ezekiel is the book. Chapter number 36, reading from verse number 26. Uh, let's go up to verse number uh, 24. That's what the Bible says. God speaking, For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. Now, God wants to do a clean work on us. God wants to cleanse us. But God wants us to respond to him. So God is saying, listen, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to pull you away from among the hidden. Uh, could I say that God not only have to pull us as seven-day Adventists from among the hidden, but God has to push out some hedonic practices that came into the church. There are some practices and there are some things that came into the church that God got to push out so that God can do a work on his church. There are some things that came into the church that should not be in the church. And God is saying, I'm going to put them out. But I must put, put them out of your life. And so God says, a new heart will I also give you. And a new spirit will I put within you and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh now now watch this this is this is not rocket science this is plain and this is simple if God is saying to us that he's gonna give us his spirit he's gonna put his spirit in us it means that there is another spirit that is operating within us nobody's hearing this preacher I'm saying to us today that if God is saying that he's going to put his spirit within us, God, the, uh, the God is actually saying that there is another spirit operating within us. And there is only two controlling spirits in this world, the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. And if our life is not governed by the spirit of God, our life is governed by the spirit of the devil. Can somebody say amen? I'm saying today that we must let God's spirit govern our life. And God is saying, I want to put my spirit within you. He did not stop there. He did not stop there. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statue 
and you shall keep my judgment and do them. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this preacher carefully. The only way we can be obedient to the word of God, the only way we are going to be obedient to the commandment of God is if we are led by the Spirit of God. Nobody's hearing this preacher, so I'm going to say it again. In order for us to be obedient to the commandment, to the commandments of God, to the statutes of God, we must be led by the Spirit of God. And in the book of Acts, the Bible says that God gives His Spirit to them that obey Him. The Spirit, thank God, does not come or is not given to us by our position in church. The Spirit is not given to us by the wealth that we own. The Spirit does, is not given to us by the education we possess. The Spirit is not given to us by the house that we have, but the Spirit is given because of our obedience to the will of God. Can somebody say amen? And so God says, verse number 28 of Exodus, as we look to close this message, and I, and he says, and he shall dwell in the land that I give your father. And he shall be my people, and I shall be your God. Now, now, Jesus made a wonderful promise. Now, in Ezekiel, God says, listen, you're going to dwell, you're going to dwell, you're going to dwell in the land that I gave your father. That's the promised land. You're going to dwell in the promised land. Now, you've got to understand that God made, uh, Jesus made a promise to all of us to, to enter a better land, to enter a great land, to enter a land that flows with milk and with honey. Here's what the Bible says in John chapter number 3. Uh, the Bible says, John, in John, watch this now, speaking to, to, the, to the Pharisee, Nicodemus. Here's what the Bible says. And, and, and there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus uh, by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher uh, come from God. For no man can do the miracles that thou uh, hast done. Expect God with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a mock man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So God has made a promise of a better land, but God says that there is a process that we must go through. There is something that we must do in order to inherit that land just as he made the promise in Ezekiel. And God says we must be born again. Hey, listen. It is strange sometimes talking to people who profess to be believers and yet still have to say to them, you must be born again. Ladies and gentlemen, because you got to understand, not everybody that profess to be in Christ are already in Christ. Jesus, Jesus said to Nicodemus, if you're going to enter into eternal life, you must be born again. And in the book of John, he made a wonderful promise to us. Let not your heart be troubled, John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I, Jesus, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that way I am there he may be also. Jesus wants us to be with him. Jesus wants us to be with him. But we must first cover our nakedness under the blood of Jesus Christ. Could I say to you, the people that will be qualified to go to the kingdom of God, it will be people clad with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It will be people covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. It will be people who are obedient to the law of God. Revelation, our final text. Revelation chapter 22. Here's what the Bible says in verse number 12. Reading from verse number 12. And behold, Jesus speaking. I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they 
that do his commandments, that they may have rights to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. Ladies and gentlemen, when Adam and Eve sinned against God and God cast them out of Eden, the Bible says that there was a flaming sword that was placed there to guard the tree of life so that Adam and Eve would not go back into that garden and partake of that tree. But the Bible declares, the Bible declares that God, there is a tree of life that you and I can be partakers of. But God is saying, only those that keep my commandments, blessed are they that do my commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Understand me. If you know the commandments of God and refuse to obey the commandments of God, you have no right to heaven. You have no right to the tree of life. But when you are obedient in the name of Jesus, when you permit the righteousness of Jesus to cover you and you permit Christ to live out his life within you, you have a right to the tree of life. I'm sure that there is somebody, there is somebody that want to say, Somebody that want to say, I want right to the kingdom. I want to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Here's what the Bible says in verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a tilt come. And whosoever will, let him take up the water of life freely. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There is a process. But God had made the process easy. God is saying to us, you want to enter the kingdom? You want to be covered? You don't want to cover your own self? You want to be covered by the righteousness of Jesus? You want to start wearing coats and not apron? The Bible says, the spirit and the bride say, come. Let him that hear it say, come. Let him that is a thirst. There are a lot of thirsty people today. Thirsty for righteousness. There are a lot of people who are thirsty for the things of the world. But what we should be hungering for and hungering and thirst for is for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Or would you want to say today, Father, I want to thirst and I want to hunger after your righteousness. I want to be clothed with your garment of righteousness. I want you to make a coat for me. I want to move my apron. If you want to say that, why not stand or why not bow your head wherever you are? So we can talk to the king of kings that can cover us in his righteousness. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. We thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we can be covered today from sin and the defilements of it. We thank you, God, that we can live a life free from sin. We can live a life above the world and above the devil. We ask, oh God, that you may empower us right now to live for you. I pray for that man and that woman, that boy, that girl that is struggling. And that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that is hiding. That are naked but hiding. I pray, oh God, today that you may move them from their cover. And cover them with your righteousness. I pray in a very special way that you may continue to bless this GBB ministry. That we may continue to spread your gospel. So that men and women can taste and see how sweet you are. We thank you, God, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do through this ministry and through the life of listeners. We ask all your mercies and your grace in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen and amen.